So yesterday I got a response from a small Twitter account showing the interior of the Cybertruck as if you were sitting in the driver's seat. Now, of course, this picture blew up and there are a lot of different opinions on it. Some people saying it is absolutely terrible and other people are saying they cannot wait for their order and this makes them even more excited. Which side are you on? Comment down below. Do you think this is the worst thing you've ever seen or the best thing you've ever seen? There's only two opinions on the internet. You can't be in the middle. Personally, I think everyone watching this video just cancel your orders. I don't think you need a Cybertruck. I really don't. I think I need to move up in line. <laughs> just kidding. Um, I'm pretty excited still, but I do have some thoughts, good and bad, about this interior that I wanted to talk about. No idea what this count is, but the picture is awesome and it supposedly shows us the interior of the production Cybertruck if this is what it's gonna look like when it's finalized. And if you wanna see more of the exterior, make sure you check out my video I posted of the Cybertruck from Cyber Roundup. I zoomed in really close with my camera so you could see a lot of the details of the exterior, but the interior was closed while I was there. Now keep in mind, Cybertruck is still prototype, it's not finished, so these things definitely can change a lot of them pretty easily, like the steering wheel. Pretty easy, even a schmuck like me can take my steering wheel off and put another one on in 15 minutes in my garage so things can change and a couple things I did here while I was there that I want to talk about as well the reason we weren't able to get up close with the Cybertruck unlike what you're seeing in this picture I was given two reasons number one the software is not finished which we'll talk about a little bit later in the video and number two the interior quality is kind of not up to par with what you'd expect from other Tesla vehicles so they had the sexy line up there on display you could go into those vehicles and it was mentioned to me that even though maybe this is the final setup we're gonna see in the production Cybertruck because you could get into those other Teslas they didn't want people to see the nice quality in the other vehicles and then get to the Cybertruck and see the quality and be like oh what's going on here when it's really not what you're gonna get in the end so looking at the left side lots of talk about the a pillars here being really big I find many modern cars have huge a pillars and even in our Model X and our Model Y I find myself kind of moving around bobbing and weaving to make sure I can look around that a pillar before I take a turn of course a lot of times the car is driving itself but you still need to look and see if anything's there and I do that a lot in many different modern cars. So let's talk about that weird steering wheel thing. And if you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit like and get subscribed. People are calling this the wheel yoke combo. They're calling it the woke, which I'm sure is making Elon super happy. Uh, it's kind of weird. It's like a rectangle or maybe a uh, oxagon or something. And I don't know how I feel about it. So I actually really like the yoke and I really like the capacitive buttons that we have in the Model X. I do actually prefer those to the stocks. I know that it's kind of controversial. A lot of people don't like that, whatever. Uh, after our year, more than year of experience using the Model X, when I get back to the Y with the stocks, and it's S-T-A-L-K, by the way, a lot of people are spelling it stocks, um, like S-T-O-C-K-S. Uh, I, I actually miss the setup in the Model X when I get back to the Model Y. I love that you can just have your hand on there and just kind of reach for the buttons. It's so easy, uh, really never been a problem for us. But the Cybertruck has a combination of different things going on here. So it has the capacitive buttons, there's no stocks, but it has new capacitive buttons. So on the left side, it looks pretty similar. You got your turn signals and your lights, which uh, works fine. On the right side, you have your windshield wipers, you have a microphone button, which again is on the Model X, and then you have your Speedo, which uh, on the Model X, it's probably the same here. It's not actually a button. It's telling you that the right scroll wheel is that button. So I actually find that is a little confusing that the rest of the, the lights, the light up buttons, you actually touch them. But that one light up button that looks like the Speedo is uh, actually the button for the scroll wheel. So it's not its own button. And then what's missing here is the horn. So I think a lot of people, including myself, would appreciate having the horn in the middle. That's a lot easier, especially if you're kind of in an emergency situation, looking around everywhere. You want to just be able to kind of mash that thing. Um, in the time we've had our exit, it hasn't been an issue. We don't really use the horn very much. But that's something I know a lot of people will like to see. And then there's a new button there, which kind of looks like uh, just a telephone. You know, you can pick up your phone calls, which I don't know, I don't talk that much in the car. Uh, some people were saying maybe something to bring up cameras. I forget, I saw it on Twitter somewhere, but someone was saying they think it's a button to bring up all your cameras because your rear view mirror is gonna be a camera. And with the Cybertruck's easily removable side view mirrors, you'll also need the repeater cams to come up occasionally on the display so you can look at those as well. I don't know, that seems kind of weird, but maybe that's something. And then the shape, it's kind of like, if it's not a round wheel, there's not really much point in the top part being there. The whole point of the wheel is that no matter where it's turned, how it's turned, it's always there in the same spot. You don't have to like grab a certain part of it. Whereas the big disadvantage with the yoke is of course it's a different shape. So as you move it, it's in different parts of space. So if you're not looking, you may uh, you know, not be able to grab it or whatever. Now again, practically, I've been using a yoke in the Model Y and aftermarket one and in the Model X for well over a year now, it's never been an issue. It's not like I've ever went to reach and like, you know, the car goes flying because I miss grabbing the yoke or something. But I mean, I hear you. I, if that's what people prefer, they want a wheel, I, I don't blame them. So it's kind of weird to just have a different shape. Now, again, I want to reiterate, this is super easy to change. So maybe it'll be optional. 
model. Right now in the Model S and X, the, a normal wheel shape comes standard and then you have to pay 250 for a yoke. So maybe this is a 250 upgrade option. Maybe we won't even see it in the final one, uh, but that's what's in there for now. And it looks cool in my opinion, but like from a, pr a practicality standpoint, it might as well be a yoke. I don't know why they'd make it a different shape. Now looking at the center display, this is where I was really excited. It looks just like a Model S or X screen. Uh, there was in the beginning, Tesla said this was gonna be a bit bigger, but maybe they changed to make it just the same screen, you know, for production efficiencies. And unfortunately the charge is on percentage. I was so hoping we'd get to see a mileage. That was like the first thing my eyes went to when this picture was posted, but no, it's, it's at 42%. And the picture was taken at 420 approximately p.m. So that's pretty funny. Uh, but you can see there's a lot missing here. And so this is where the software is not finished. Of course, it's not out yet. And even when it is out, Tesla continually updates the software in their vehicles. You can see you have a button for your frunk. You have the lock and unlock button, which is what you'll find on other vehicles. And then you have the charge port button, which again, you find on other vehicles. But the thing that's missing here is there's no control for the trunk, quote unquote, or the tonneau cover uh, or the tailgate of the truck. Now I would expect for sure you're gonna have a release button, a software button on the screen. So that's missing here. And so is the tonneau cover control, which I would expect to see those right on there. Uh, for us to see and this is where it's unfinished. Hopefully that will be added before delivery But it's something that Tesla if these things are you know electronically controlled Which of course the tenu cover is that's what we've seen so far Anyway, you'll have buttons for that right on the screen right there other than that We're not seeing the cool cyber styling software that we saw at the initial initial unveil of the cyber truck Or even there was another prototype uh, interior picture that was shared a while ago And that one even had a different looking software, but maybe it was in a menu or something again This can change like in 10 minutes if they do a software update so I I wouldn't be too concerned with this, but I've seen people already concerned that like on the bottom bar, you have like nothing down there. Um, you don't have the cool style, but again, this can all change really quickly. And another thing to note is the GPS in here is showing Fremont. So it's not even, this was in Austin, Texas. This was the cyber truck that was at cyber rodeo. The one I took pictures of and took video of. So obviously that's not the, the correct uh, map data. And when you tow a Tesla, like, like let's say the Cybertruck hadn't driven around recently, it won't update its GPS. So maybe this thing hasn't driven in Austin and the last place it drove was in California. Seems unlikely, but for some reason it's just showing that as its GPS data. Maybe a GPS antenna isn't hooked up. There's lots of explanations that again, it's a prototype, who cares about these small details, but you see a lot of people freaking out. Now, the one thing I really am not liking that I'm seeing, and again, things can change, but when you look at the center console, so so the storage, I kind of like how the little storage thing looks like the tonneau cover, looks like they did that on purpose. But when you look in front of that, there's this huge open area uh, next to whoever's sitting there next to their legs. And this is reminiscent of the old Model S and Model X interior. And it is actually kind of nice when you hop in the car and that's there because the car feels huge. I mean, it feels like you have so much room, but then you quickly realize it's a lot of wasted space. It's just this huge open cavern with nothing there. So you don't see any wireless charging like you do in every other Tesla today. Uh, wireless charging, I should say for your cell phone. Uh, you don't see any uh, storage up there and it's just like blank and empty. Now, this could have some aftermarket inserts. Maybe you put whatever you want there. Maybe it hooks up somewhere just via a quick cable or something. Or of course, maybe this is gonna be different when they actually produce the Cybertruck. And for this prototype, it's just however they wanted to do it now, they left it open like that. Armrest is looking a little angular there, which is pretty funny, but you do miss out on that sixth seat, which I know a lot of people were looking forward to. Personally, I don't care that much. We have two kids, so there's four of us. So like one kid can bring a friend and the other kid can't, I guess, <laughs> if, if that happens in the future. So for me, it's not a big deal, but again, I see a lot of back and forth with this online. Some people are saying this is like a deal breaker. They will not get a truck that doesn't have six seats. Other people saying uh, I've owned plenty of trucks with six seats and having somebody sit there is awful even if you're driving for like two minutes. So I wouldn't use it anyway. I'd much rather have storage. Now the dashboard, oh my goodness, that thing is so long. It looks so silly. And from the outside, you know, you could kind of predict it was going to be like that because the windshield is so tall and it's so angular. And from a practicality standpoint, it probably doesn't matter that much. Biggest concern there would be visibility. Of course, if you have a huge huge uh, dashboard and your nose goes out really far, then it's going to be hard to see in front of the truck, which is a problem with pretty much all trucks and SUVs, the gas powered ones, because their front is just so huge. And when you sit in like a Model Y or a Model 3 and you look out the front, there's nothing there. I mean, you cannot, even if you sit up really tall, like right now, I can't even see my hood unless I sit up. I mean, I keep my seat all the way on the bottom, but unless I sit up really far, I just can't see my hood. And so you have really good front visibility there. Now we've seen the Cybertruck from the outside is angled down pretty aggressively. So I don't think this is gonna be a concern. I've driven other pickups, like normal shaped, normal shaped pickups. And it is weird to have this huge, gigantic like table <laughs> driving in front of you pretty much the whole time. Uh, and it does get in your way of visibility. Higher speeds, it's not a big deal, but 
into parking spots, out of parking spots, stuff like that, it can get in the way. And hopefully Cybertruck is not gonna suffer from that too much. But if it does, it's not really gonna be any different than any other truck. Now, another thing that seems to be missing here is just in general, like bells and whistles that you'll see a lot from uh, the other auto manufacturers. They just have buttons everywhere and you know their, their center armrest like goes backwards and forwards and in and out and turns into a table and like teleports you to another dimension. I mean, they do all these crazy things. And in, in typical Tesla style, this is super minimalist. Now, Elon Musk and Tesla are trying to make this an affordable truck. They've said it from the beginning. They don't want this to turn into another Model X that goes crazy with all these uh, features that make it super hyper expensive. I think prices will probably still be high, at least initially, because of ramping up production and demand will be really high. Uh, but <laughs> speaking of that, the reactions of this, and I shouldn't be surprised to see how negative some of the comments are. Now, whenever someone sees something initially, no matter what, there's going to be a lot of negativity until people either get used to it or come around to it or experience it themselves. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of people saying that this interior looks super cheap and I actually can't disagree with them too much. It's a lot of plastic. It's very simplified as we would expect from Tesla. So there's not a whole lot going on in here in terms of like extra features and stuff. Now that'll all be in the software. And of course you're just getting a Tesla for their uh, expertise in, in batteries. They have good battery reliability. You know, they're gonna kind of be there for you. And of course the supercharger network. But in terms of this interior, it's not super exciting. I mean, compare this to just a Model Y that, you know, of course we don't know the price of the Cybertruck, but say Cybertruck is 80,000 and Model Y is $30,000 cheaper, you're getting a lot of the same stuff, especially once we see the Highland refresh, the Model 3 may have the same type of steering wheel. No stocks, capacitive buttons, whether that's good or bad, it may be what we're seeing. And then it's this thing of like, okay, now I have a bed versus I don't have a bed, right? And of, a lot of people are gonna pay for that for sitting up higher and the ride quality and uh, cause this will have air suspension. Um, but that interior experience, a lot of people also really care about that. So looking at the older Cybertruck picture, just for really quick reference, they did have a driver's display, which I'm kind of conflicted because I love it in the Model X. And the big reason I love it is cause a lot of that info, of course is important, but you don't really need to see it all the time. It needs to be there whenever you do need Need to look at it but it's not something you need to interact with that much so i love number one the model x has a much bigger screen than the model y but on top of that most of the model x's big screen is not taken up by all that information you can put in the display in front of the driver so not only does the x have a bigger screen it has more space to display all the cool info it has like maps and music and all of those things so when i get into my model y the smaller 15 inch screen feels extra cramped because on top of being a smaller screen you have all of the driver's display information taking up like what a fourth of the of the display or more than that uh, on the side near the driver so for cybertruck i was actually pretty excited like hey we're still gonna get that driver's display which i I do like, I don't think it's necessary, but I like it. And we're gonna get a huge screen, which is gonna be great. But now you look at the new one and uh-oh, the, the driver's display is gone. Again, I'm not surprised because of wanting to keep costs low and everything. And again, it could show up by production, but I don't know, <laughs> looking at this, probably not, especially if they're doing crash tests and things, they're probably pretty close uh, to done with final design. So hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know your thoughts on the Cybertruck down below and you will see me in the next video.